Welcome to KJV Cafe, where the truths of God's Word come alive. Grab a hot cup of coffee or tea and spend some time learning about our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Listen now to Pastor Clark Covington of Heartland Community Baptist Church as he explores great insights from the Word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the cafe. Pastor Clark Covington here with KJV Cafe. I'm so glad you're joining me here today. Uh, Hopefully you're having a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Man, it's good to be back at the cafe here today. It's been a a little while here since um, since I've been on the air. I think we recorded messages earlier last week or something like that. So I'm just excited here to be back. Um, And hey, I have a great message for you. I believe it's not just from me, but it's from the Lord. Amen. I've prayed about this. I've had this note uh, in my inbox for a little bit, and the Lord's finally allowing me to flesh this message out, preach it to you here. And I promise it'll be a blessing to you here today. Uh, We are in the Thanksgiving season. I guess by the time this airs, you'll be wrapping up that Thanksgiving holiday, getting ready for Christmas. Maybe you're listening to this at another time. Look, everybody's thinking about being thankful. Everyone's thinking about, um, you know, what they're thankful for, gratitude and so forth. Uh, maybe many people probably are very, uh, thankful, uh, this year to be able to spend time with family where the last couple of years, maybe they haven't been. And there's so many things to be thankful for, but today I want to talk about the rich privilege of serving the Lord, being thankful for the opportunity, opportunity to serve God. And I'll tell you what, if you knew, if you knew uh, how good it is to serve God, you would absolutely be running to him in prayer and praise, thanking him for the opportunity. Because look, outsiders look at those enlisted in Christian service as poor, do they not? As missing all the fun in life, right? You tell someone you're in the ministry, sometimes they'll wince like, oh man, how do you do that? You know, uh, the, out, the the outsiders, the lost folks will look at Christian service as a uh, uh, like just complete sacrifice and nothing to be gained by the individual. They'll say, how could you do that? You know, um, even Christians will look on other Christians as they're missing out and sacrificing as they serve God. And yes, of course, there is sacrifice in serving God. Uh, but man, it's such a privilege to serve him. And we're going to get to a bunch of reasons why in a minute. Inwardly, those that serve the Lord, Christians, can look at themselves as trodden down and defeated can ask God, you know, hey, when is this going to come to an end? When am I going to get a reprieve, a relief? Uh, this has been challenging. Maybe the Lord has put you in a challenging ministry. I think of uh, mission folks to, uh, you know, the mission field in far-flung areas, and they miss their family. I mean, look, uh, I would miss even the little little uh, pleasantries of life, you know. If I was in some far-flung village, I'm like, please just give me like a, a Coke or something from McDonald's, you know. That sounds silly, but you can't get that out there in some places, amen. And that's the silly example, but there's many deep examples, missing family, friends, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, and so forth, the great sacrifice that those in far-flung mission fields make. But even those in the prison ministry and encountering everyday uh, people with really big problems and moms and dads that are separated from their children and and, uh, all of the the things that that, that those in the prison ministry ministry may encounter, uh, they too uh, will get burdened down or the, even the bus ministry. I remember, uh, doing a lot of bus pickups, uh, bus ministry. And you know what you see in the bus ministry? Oftentimes you'll see broken households. I'm talking about like physically, materially broken. And you'll see things that'll just make you shake your head. Or, uh, my wife working in the nursery would tell me about children coming into the nursery uh, years ago and having really bad diaper rash and other things. And it just breaks your heart. But I want you today to take a step back. I just gave you a few of what could be countless examples of why it's hard oftentimes to serve the Lord. But today, I want you to rejoice in knowing that it is a rich privilege to serve the living God. And I mean it with all my heart. It is a privilege to serve God. If you have your Bible, let's open here to Proverbs chapter 16, verses 8 through 9. Proverbs 16, 8 through 9. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Well, that's an incredible verse. I love Proverbs. 
And this verse, especially written by Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, King David's son, uh, we, we, hear, we see here that better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. And as I've explained this to my own kids, and you know, we'll just talk about, hey, it's better to live right than to be crooked and, and have a lot of stuff. But you know what? It, in order to be used by God, we don't need to have a lot of material things, do we? But we do need to have righteousness, amen? Serving God is about righteousness and not revenues. It's realizing our need for him. And we're going to get into in a little bit what that looks like. But serving God is not about revenues. I mean, the probably the least fit person, for the most part, to serve God would be somebody that had a lot of revenue, had a lot of money, okay? Now, God uses rich people in the Bible. God can use a rich person here if their heart is soft and they're humble. But the Bible uh, tells us, the living word tells us um, that it's easier to go through the eye of a ne- the camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to go to heaven because they trust their riches. And so we don't necessarily need riches. We and, and that goes not just for money, but we don't need to be rich with education or rich with social status or rich with connections or rich with anything else uh, at all other than just simply knowing the Lord. Okay, because that's what righteousness is. Right living is living like Christ. And second here, this truth from Proverbs 16, 8 through 9, God's ultimately in control of our destiny and our path, for better or worse. Uh, Again, often misunderstood verse, I think. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Well, for the believer, they're saying, amen. Yeah, you know what? My heart, the Bible says my heart can be deceitfully wicked. Uh, Who can know it, right? You know, my heart could be telling me to go one way, but God's going to direct me another path. Look, if you go through the Bible, you see God not only rewarding those that are living for him and directing their path in the good way. Amen. Um, like a King David or like a, uh, like a Abraham and so, or, you know, like Jacob and, uh, Joseph and so forth. But we also see it returned, uh, uh, the wickedness returned to those that are living wickedly uh, over and over again. And I'm in the book of Jeremiah right now in my morning Bible study and Jeremiah's praying to God and God uh, speaking back to him saying, look, because Jeremiah being a prophet, he was able to have this, th- these words from God come to him. And God's saying, look, I'm going to repay them for their wickedness. Uh, like I never thought of this. I realized this when I was studying the Bible just the other day. Look, even a pastor can realize new things. Uh, in the in the book of Jeremiah, God says through the prophet Jeremiah, I'm going to let them go into Babylonian captivity where they serve strange gods because the Israelites were serving strange gods. So I knew that they had gone to Babylonian captivity. I knew that they had gone off and were serving strange gods, but I did not know that that poetic part where the Babylonians who were pagan and uh, polytheistic and on and on worshiping these false gods, I did not know, I didn't put two and two together, but that's what God was doing. God was repaying them for their wickedness. And so God directs their steps both good and and bad, just like he did then, he's still doing today. Amen. And you can go deeper in that if you look at uh, the names that, that the uh, Hebrews were given, the Jewish people were given once they went into Babylon, they were named after their various gods and so forth. So it's very rich in detail and very poetic of God. But we understand that that the truth here is that God ultimately is in control of our destiny and our path for better or worse, depending on if our heart is towards him or not. So today, we're going to look at that rich privilege of serving God and how this text verse, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. We're going to look at how this intersects and how it truly is an incredible privilege to serve the living God. We're going to look at serving God here. We're going to look at serving God in heaven And finally, we're going to look and make sure we understand this privilege that we are given to serve him at all. So firstly, the rich privilege of serving God here on earth. A little revenue with righteousness goes a long way with the Lord. What is too hard for God? You know, God may be putting on your heart a ministry that is big and it looks big. And you say, how on earth could I do this, right? Maybe you want to have uh, get a Bible to every person in the Amazon, or you want to have every Iranian uh, have the living word, have the King James Bible in their hands, or whatever it is. You know, you're saying, how am I going to do this? You know, God's compelling you to do it. 
What's too hard for God? Amen. A little revenue with righteousness goes a long way. You don't have a whole lot, but you have sold out to God. You have gotten your sin under the blood. Amen. You've been saved. Amen. You are living for him the best you can. Not perfectly, but you are living for him the best you can. Every morning, every day, you're repenting before God. You're saying, Lord, I don't want anything to stand between us. You're not rebelling against God. You're not running from God. You're not choosing the ways of this world. Amen. You have said, Lord, I put you first. Well, if you have done that, then what is too hard for him to do? If he has put on your heart to go do such and such, could you not do it? Amen. I mean, you look at the lives of these great men and women of God that have done great things for God. They were very unlikely individuals. Amen. Uh, Billy Graham, you look at those crusades and I, I'll marvel looking at the stadiums. Uh, our, we had a missionary we were hosting in our home uh, f- for a season there, and I hope to get him on air soon. He showed me a picture of a, the, a Billy Graham crusade in the Philippines, and you couldn't count how many people were in the street. You know, uh, could Billy Graham have imagined that? Uh, could D.L. Moody, you know, somebody that had not all the education in the world, and you read about him, not just having great revivals here in America, but going over to Europe, you know, the last person you would think it would be some international traveler, somebody well-to-do, it was not, amen. D.L. Moody got kicked out of his house because uh, he was so poor, amen. Uh, look, this is fascinating who God can use. A little revenue with righteousness goes a long way. And when we serve God here, guess what? This is a privilege because Number one, we don't need a whole lot, okay? So number one, to serve God, it's a privilege because we don't need a whole lot. And, you know, we talk all the time on the program about the world and the ways of the world and how much you need to get ahead in the world. And I really believe that. Like, there's all these things that you need to get ahead in the world, and we don't have time to go into all of it. But you you know what I'm saying. Like, you know, what if you're born in an awful school district? I mean, statistically— you are in trouble, right? Or what if, whatever, on and on and on, you know, you, uh, uh, you have certain issues that impair you from doing X, Y, Z, then certainly in this world, it'd be hard uh, to, you know, imagine you could never use a computer or a phone for whatever reason, disability you had, right? That's going to make your life very hard to get ahead in the world. Uh, but in God's eyes, no matter where you are, he can use you if your heart's right with him. And secondly, when we serve him, another privilege, number one, not having, not needing to have a lot. Number two, we, we have a peace in our life that surpasses all understanding. And what I mean by that is people all over the world are looking for peace. They're looking for meaning, and they cannot find it. And we have it right there in front of us. And maybe God's called you to be a prayer warrior. Maybe God's called you to help upgrade the songbooks in your church or to feed the needy or to, to, to do something right there locally. And you have meaning in your life. Like you can, you can say, yeah, you know, I'm doing God's will, the creator God, the maker of it all. I'm serving him. You know, that is a rich privilege that most people never get to experience. Sadly to say, most people never, ever get to do what they, the God's called them to do to fulfill his plan. And they know that. And, and I believe that with all my heart. No, I haven't taken a poll and a survey of everyone in the graveyard, but I bet you if they could speak, they would tell you they didn't do what God wanted them to do for the most part because they never understood this principle of what a rich privilege it is. They're too busy looking at the Christian and saying, oh, I wouldn't want that life. And that's kind of the irony of serving God. We do it because we love God and we're blessed by doing it. And people don't even understand how blessed we are. And who is to serve God? You know, you may be saying, well, am I equipped to serve God? You know, Jesus gives us an idea of who's to serve God in Matthew 5, 3 through 12. These are the Beatitudes they're called. Uh, And Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Well, what does that mean? The poor in spirit, those are those that, that, that know they need God. They're mourning because they realize their spiritual condition. They are broken. They realize they can't do it on their own. They individually need a savior. Many people out here today, they don't think they need a savior. They think they're good to go. They don't think they're a sinner. They think their neighbor's a sinner, but they think they're fine. Well, God can't use them, amen, but he can use someone that's poor in spirit. He can use someone that's mourning, amen. He could use someone that's meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What is meek? Meek is strengthness under control. Strength under control. Excuse me. I was thinking meekness. Meek is strength under control. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So those that are desiring that righteousness that is better than a lot of revenues, because people that are living wickedly, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And so we get a little peek here into who's equipped to serve God. It is the meek, the lowly, the humble, the pure in heart. That means those that have been saved and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Those that are not seeking the ways of the world. Those that are living as God would call them to live. Those are who are eligible, I believe, to serve God. There's tons of scripture in the Bible about how, look, you cannot bear good fruit if you're an evil tree, right? An evil tree can only bear evil fruit. It's in the scripture. And so if we're living wickedly, if we're living in some pet sin and we still think that we can do something for God, we're mistaken. We need to repent and get right with God and get into the right mind frame, as Jesus Christ so eloquently put in Matthew 5 uh, in the Beatitudes chapter 3. Read the whole chapter and you'll see what it's like to serve God and who is called to serve God. And we all can do something for God if we're willing to come to him humbly and ask him to use us and ask him to get rid of those things in our life that is impeding us from being used. Because God is the plan for everyone, but not everyone will come to him and he's not going to force his hand. He's not going to say, okay, I'm going to lock your door. I'm not going to let you out of your house until you come and serve me. No, he is going to, again, guide your steps according to how you've, you're uh, looking towards him or not. Amen. Now, in God's mercy, he may allow you to get into a low estate where you realize your need for him. That's what happened to me. Amen. I got so low, I realized just being saved wasn't enough, that I really needed to be right with God and seek his face and seek his desire. And I learned, okay, God wants me to serve him. And I started serving God and I kept serving God. And I did a little bit of this. I did the videos and helped plant this church, do this. I was a deacon and I was a little youth preacher. Well, before I became a youth preacher, I was doing my little recordings and stuff. And brother Ronnie Dale of Holland Memorial Church was at my house doing a recording. And he said, when are you going to start preaching, Clark? And I said, well, I don't know. Uh, and he said, well, I had three strokes when I was running from the Lord. And I looked at brother Ronnie Dale. I said, I'm, I'll start preaching right now. <laughs> you know, I don't want the strokes. I don't need the heart attacks. And I believe him. I believe every word that he said. And I, I thank God for that man, uh, because that was what led me, kind of pushed me over the edge to surrender to the Lord. And so we see that l- the Lord and his mercy will help us, but he, we have to, I mean, look, what was I doing? I was already trying to serve him. I was already seeking him, right? If I was out in the world, I don't know that I'd ever have that conversation, but when God sends someone our way, we need to incline our ear to that individual. We know that it is from the Lord and we need to serve God wholeheartedly because it is a rich privilege. It's not just a privilege here on earth to serve God with peace and with meaning, uh, with, with, with purpose, with uh, obviously collecting a reward that does not tarnish, that is eternal, but also in heaven, it's a privilege to serve the Lord. Did you know that we'll serve God in heaven? Surely we will. Revelation 22, 1 through 5. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You know, operative word there is they, right? They, the servants of God, will see his face, amen? The servants of God do not need a son because he is the light, amen? I love the light. I am someone that loves sunlight. I love natural light. I love the beach because there's a lot of sun there and all that stuff. I am so excited for heaven because he is the light. There is no night there. And we are serving him. But the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it, in heaven, and his servants shall serve him. Who's, who is he? That's God. And who are his servants? That's those, I believe, as far as I can tell, that have been saved, amen, uh, that, that when we go to heaven, uh, we'll serve him. We will be servants of God. We're not going to be playing a harp on a cloud, I don't think. We're going to be serving God. We're going to be living for God. We're going to have tasks that we do for God. 
And yet we're going to do it in our resurrected body. We're going to do it without pain, without suffering, without sin, without remorse and regret and shame and guilt and temptations and problems. We're going to serve God in a much more pure form because we're going to see him. We're going to have his name in our forehead, the Bible says, amen. We're going to be known as servants of God. And this, I can go on and on about this, but this gets me excited because I have a privilege here of serving God here on earth. And I have the privilege here of serving God in heaven. And who am I? Nothing but a servant of God. I'm, not, I'm just a beggar, amen. I'm just a poor uh, earthly man that was saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, miraculously, amen. Uh, I was saved by God. It was all him. He saved me, amen. And he used some preachers to save me, uh, but he did the saving. And now I do the serving because he did the saving and I love him. And I'm not saved by serving. I'm saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Jesus Christ alone. I serve though, because I am saved. That is a indication that I am saved because I'm serving God. You know, if, if you get saved and you're just living carnally like the world, then, you know, the Bible says by their fruits, you'll know them. And so if you're living carnally like the world, well, by what are your fruits? What fruits are you, are you showing? Amen. The Bible shows that we are to bear fruit for God. Some people interpret that as just having kids. Look, it's more than having kids. Okay. It is creating spiritual children of God by planting those seeds that God will do uh, the, the, the watering of, and some, some, not all, some will be saved. Amen. And that will be, I believe, a big part of our reward in heaven. So finally here, do you understand this privilege? You know, uh, for the time, sake of time, I'm going through kind of quickly. And, you know, there's I could go down a rabbit trail this way or that way. Uh, but I wanted to get to this point and spend a little bit on it. Do you understand this privilege today that God has allowed you, friend, you that are that's listening here today, he's allowed you to partake in his service? This is a privilege. Uh, oftentimes when I pray before the radio, because uh, I pray before every episode to make sure that that uh, God is in it, the Holy Spirit is preaching through me, amen. I pray and ask God that to get me out of the way by the working of the Holy Spirit to preach through me what he'd have his people to know that day. And, and I, I thank God often for the privilege to preach on the radio, the privilege, amen. It's a privilege to serve him, whether it's on the radio, whether it's behind the pulpit, whether it's uh, doing the accounting for the church or, again, recording the videos. I used to be the video guy, so any video people listening, that is a privilege to serve God, amen. Look around and see what God has done in your life. Uh, as I wrap up here, my wife is going to the homeless minute, uh, shelter and she serves there and she's she it's a privilege that she serves there she has a corporate job and she is burdened down and she's a mother of 3 and she's a husband to me and you know she's a preacher's wife she's going through all this stuff she has a lot on her plate and you know i'm i'm being dead serious probably the happiest times i ever see her is when she comes back from that shelter and she's just beaming. And what is she doing there? That little lady, my wife, you know her, she's tiny, uh, tiny little lady. She's over there carrying food and getting clothes out and serving people. And it is the most beautiful thing. Not the person. The person may be joyful or not that's being served, but she is joyful. Amen. And sometimes I do have to remind her and say, do you realize the rich privilege that you have to do this? And oh, it's nothing and on and on, you know. It's a rich privilege. It is a rich privilege, amen, to serve God, to partake in his service. But how about this? We have a limited time to fulfill our earthly service, what he has planned for us to do. God has a plan for you here on earth, and this life is like a vapor, the Bible says. It will not be here forever, so we need to be about our Father's business. And oh, you say, but you don't understand, preacher, I got this going on or that going on. No, no, no. Just take a step back. I'm not telling you to do something because I want you to do it. I'm telling you to do something urgently because God's not going to tarry forever. And that many people are praying, Lord, Maranatha, come back soon. Lord, please return. We're ready. We're ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I pray that prayer all the time. And I also reconcile it with many still need to be saved and so forth. And let me, I'm so glad that the Lord tarried long enough that I could be saved. And so again, you know, you have to balance that, but they're the time is almost here, friend. You'll hear everybody, everybody, especially the older saints of God that have been through COVID-19 and all this have said they've never seen anything like it. And the Bible tells us that in the end times, things will wax worse and worse. Okay. So it's not going to get any better. Time is at hand. We need to be about our father's business. So we have a privilege from God to serve him, but that we have a limited time and nothing else compares to serving God. 
So why not do the best thing while you have time to do anything? And this is the best thing. Everything else totally fails and lacks in comparison. And that is, again, the irony. The world will say, oh, poor you. You got to go to the homeless shelter. You got to go to the prison. No, no, don't poor me. This is the greatest privilege I have. I'm earning heavenly reward. I have a mission. I'm doing something for God. I have peace in my heart. I have joy in my heart. I go up to those share up there at WHPY. We have listeners there at WHPY. And I have a long drive home, like three or four hours home. And I'm driving home and I'm telling you every time I go up there and maybe brother Keith is listening, he's going to try to get me to go up there more. But, uh, every time I am just so happy, you know, because was able to go and help raise money for the station and all this stuff and spend time with the brethren, but it's just serving God is there's joy in my heart. It's unexplainable. Why I'm just happy. I shouldn't, you know, you're in sitting in rush hour traffic. You got stuff to do when you get home and all that, but I'm really happy. I'm genuinely happy. And so the point is that we have a privilege that's better than anything else that we can do. I don't feel that way uh, when I'm on my day job or my second job or whatever things I'm doing. I don't feel that way. I don't have that joy, but I have that joy when I'm serving God. And yet the devil wants to distract us and the devil wants to bring other stuff up and tell us we're not worthy and have us fall into sin so we get far off from God and all these things. We need to simply, this this is like the end here, we need to simply go to God in prayer Ask him to forgive us of our sins. We need to repent and ask God, Lord, if there's anything standing in the way between us, please help me to understand what it is. Lord, forgive me, right? Identifying what that sin is, getting it under the blood, and then just praying to him, say, Lord, show me what you'd have me to do. Please, and I'll do it. You know, God God values obedience more than sacrifice. So we just need to be obedient. We just need to seek the Lord. Maybe he wants to see, well, will this young man, will this woman... Will they be like this in a month, in six months, in a year, in two years, in five years? And that takes commitment, doesn't it? That takes discipline. And so what we have to do, and most importantly, it takes the Holy Spirit. So what we have to do is make sure we're not grieving the Holy Spirit and that we're seeking the Lord every day. And he will reveal himself to you. And it could be progressive. It could be a little bit at a time. But we get in his word, we pray, we seek the Lord. He'll reveal himself to you. And clearly he will use you to do his good pleasure here on earth that he's planned just for you, that he's designed you to partake in, and then you will get the blessing here on earth, and you'll also get the blessing in heaven. And I can't think of anything better, friend. I really cannot think of anything better. And so to wrap up, you know, about a year ago, just about a year ago, uh, I was... We we're talking with our church about getting involved with an orphanage to care for the fatherless. James one twenty seven, pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So we looked at visiting the fatherless. And from there, we started taking um, classes with this organization, the Children's Baptist Home, a great organization. And that really blessed our family uh, going through the training and going and meeting the trainers. And, you know, it wasn't always easy, but I believe it's what God wanted us to do. Even though uh, my wife had kind of gotten sick, and we weren't able to to take in a child right away. I believe it's something for the future. And so you just get excited. You're just like, God, what are you up to? You know, and we don't know. But it was a privilege to go through the training program, to meet those people, to still correspond with those people, uh, to help the 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 uh, home, the orphanage out in some small way. To do these things was a privilege, uh, and again, it's something God may use. I believe He will use in the future. And there's a lot of examples like that. And so, friend, don't be afraid to go out on a limb. And to seek the Lord and to see what he wants to do with you and how you could be used. There's so many opportunities. The scripture says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. That is a truth, especially in these last days. So look to God, get right with God, and then seek the Lord and, and, and earnestly beg, beg him, contend with him, ask him, strive with him. Say, God, give me what you'd have me to do how you'd have me to serve, because Lord, this right here is truly a privilege to serve you, and I desire to have that privilege, and I will be grateful and humble for any way you allow me to serve you. I will be absolutely flattered that I can serve you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for listening today. Take care, God bless, and amen. Thanks for visiting the cafe today. 
Our goal is to inspire you with the truth and depth of God's Word in a straightforward manner. Do you know Jesus? You can today. Visit kjvcafe.com to learn more about God's great plan of salvation for all of mankind. Until next time, remember, as Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 puts it, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Righteousness.